friends with my younger brother before he even knew the relationship between me and my brother magic-wise. So I've known him for quite a while, and he is playing blue-white red control, which is basically a a blue-white control list that's splashing is a charm and turn burn. So pretty conventional blue-white list. A couple of red cards thrown in. Yeah. So. Now, now we're enter we're switching from your domain to entering my domain for sure. this matchup here. Uh, what really helps Rudy in this matchup is that he, as a blue white red control deck, he plays counter flux in his deck as well. Um, both these decks, remember, they try to win with. Well, there's um, Ali's not playing an elixir in his deck. I don't know. I don't believe Rudy is. He has one. He has he has the elixir in his deck. So Rudy does have the inevitability. This does put Ali into the control matchup into the aggro matchup here. The hard thing is that Ali can't fight over his own spells here, and that's because you can't win a counter for against, war against counterflux. He's going to have to fight over Rudy's spells. And we see Rudy's actually gone on a man plan out of the board. Uh, he has Soldier of the Pantheon turn one. He's going to swing in for two and trade it away with the Mutavault to pass the turn. And Rudy's got to be thrilled with getting a Stone Rain in the control mirror on the second turn. Stone Rain's great. You actually really don't want to miss a land before turn seven in this matchup. Um, both players are playing very quickly here. They're, you know, this is game two that unsurprisingly, we see Ali shocked there so he can cycle Azorius Charm. It's not always even certain that players keep in Azorius Charm in this matchup, but he had, he shocked he didn't end up casting it. And then both players are just gonna trade lands for a while here. We see Rudy on the play is the first player who can go for Jace. He actually could go for Jace here if he wanted to, because he has the, like, the worry about going for Jace would be that your opponent would Jace you back, but because Rudy has a Mutavault, he can threaten his opponent's Jace. So what are the critical cards in these matchups? Well, I mean, in the matchup, land, land is really important. Mutavault is actually, in my opinion, one of the most important cards because it allows you to tap out for Jace. Post-board, you have to be a little more careful about doing that. Your opponent might resolve Jace 5 or Aetherling if you tap out. Um, I like to try to sneak in an early memory, early architect of thought just to ensure my land drops in this matchup. Um, but that said, there's not really, really what you're trying to do in this man. Like, Elixir is the most important card in Rudy's deck. Rudy's game plan is going to be to counterflux Ali's business spells um, and then hopefully resolve his own Elixir. Um, and you see, is it Charm able to take out a Jace? That's huge for, for Rudy. So now he has a window here to potentially well, resolve something big of his own? He can. His worry is that he's going to get Aether. Yeah, he, he's because it's only five lands, he can do that. If it was six, he couldn't because then an Aetherling might hit. We see Jace minus two will go ahead and take a counter flux for Rudy. Yeah, that, get, that allowed him the window to, for his own Jace. And I think it was a little aggressive for Ali to go for that Jace as a result. Although he was also out of land, so he's sort of, right. he's sort of stuck. And in control mirrors, it feels often the first person who misses land drops has to start actually casting things. Right, you have to become aggro if you miss the land, if you're going to be the one who misses the land drop. And right. that, that allows the other player to start using their counter spells, resolving their own stuff. All right, so we see a flip from, from Jace is he, Ali, Ali does hit the land he needs, and he has a syncopate there with Soldier of the Pantheon in his hand. Looks like he's going to leave up syncopate mana. Um, so both players with Jace here, uh, Rudy's up on lands, which is good for him. Like I said, the biggest thing is that Rudy's counterfluxes mean that Ali won't get to resolve his business spells, which is a natural advantage for Rudy. The thing is, is that that won't help Rudy resolve his own elixir at all. Mm -hmm. uh, counterflux is great, is very aggressive, but it's not good at defending your own spells. Or it's no better than, say, a dissolve. That's true. And so how do you feel about Soldier of the Pantheon as a sideboard plan in these matchups? Um, it's good. It allows pressure here. Ali made a little bit of a slight error there. He uh, attacked with Soldier, and he actually just got it eaten by by Rudy's Mutavault. Uh, forgetting that I, I think forgetting that it would turn into a one-one after the attack. Um, I if I had 30 sideboard slots, I would play Soldiers in my board. Right now, I don't have them in my list just because I have other cards I really like more. Um, but I do like it in the matchup. It provides good pressure. Uh, a lot of times in these late games, you have, you're have going to have to start discarding cards because you're hoarding so many things in your hand. And so something that you can just cast is pretty nice, and that actually has effect on the board. So Rudy draws an Aetherling now, so we'll see if he is just going to just going to go for it. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and... Looks like he is going to go ahead and go for Aetherling into Ali's open mana. Um, 
It's pretty aggressive on the Aethling. Ali's going to syncopate it for one. That gets Rudy to tap out. And nice. Nah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's gone. It's very gone. Although this is, even even though, you know, of course he would have liked to just win the game with Aethling, this exchange of resources and forcing Ali to use mana on his own turn is, is not bad for Rudy. It's not bad. It does. What you do have to worry about is it actually just takes the Aetherling out of Rudy's deck. Um, I believe he only has one Aetherling. Is that correct? Correct. So that's you know that's a concern. If you're Ali, you probably sh he probably should have Elspeth killed the Aetherling. The problem is now he's going to have to fight over wear tears because he put Aetherling under a detention sphere. Um, so that does give Rudy, that does give Rudy extra outs here. And both players trading back on land. How many Muta Vaults are currently in your list? Well, in just blue white, I'd play two. Um, Muta Vaults are just are mainly just for trading with other Muta Vaults and for pressuring opposing Jaces. Um, you don't actually ever kill someone with them. They're just utility lands. We see right now both players with a Muta Vault. Um, and it looks like they are checking. Yeah, they're right now. Ollie's pulling ahead on lands pretty heavily, uh, which isn't terribly relevant at this point. Right, he's not in a position to actually resolve through counters because he just. Right. It's not about mana at this point. It's about well, actually the text on your cards. Especially as the blue white player, you really can't put much value on your own spells. Um, for example, because he's not the counterflux player, Dissolve is a better card for him than Jace. Whereas in Rudy's deck, Jace may be a better, like, Rudy's threats are more, Rudy wants to draw threats, whereas Ali needs to draw answers. Because Ali's threats, he just has to assume don't do anything. So both right. players playing a little bit of Drago here. Rudy's yeah. digging for some lands. Yeah, and a pretty good, this is, Jace is doing a lot of work here. Rudy found Assemble, Gainsay, Land. He actually took the Assemble the Legion over the Gainsay here. And he's going to go ahead and just cast Assemble. His hand is pretty threat dense, so his plan right now appears to be to just run Ali out of cards. You know, we see an Elspeth, we see a Revelation, we see a lot of Counterfluxes. And Assemble's going to... It look, this is, looks like the assembles on the stack. Ali's going to try to make a revelation play. Yeah. Or he's possibly debating syncopating this as well. Yeah. Rudy has, has very suspiciously left up counterflux mana. I believe he actually, you know, he knows Rudy has a counterflux from an early Jace. So the, the problem with the blue light deck is that you can't really play around counterflux. You just have, you have to just, you hope that they counterflux. Like if he can get Rudy to counterflux a syncopate, that's a win for Ali. Mm -hmm. Um, he wants the counterfluxes to be spent on something that isn't his own threats. But, but Rudy's pretty heads up about this, and as you notice, he just he didn't counterflux there. Although now he's potentially losing his Jays here as well to that Muta Vault. Right, which is bad, but Rudy does have seven cards in hand. Like, it could be a lot worse. Jace, Jace is nice, but not necessary. Mm -hmm. But now the, it feels like the game shifted a little bit insofar as, you know, now Rudy is the one who's a little bit tight on mana. He's the one with a lot of cards in his hand. Feels like he needs to start playing a little bit more proactively. A little bit. So the lands are important for Ali to a point. Um, players should be concerned about about cards, number of cards in their deck right now as well. You know, whoever has the, the larger deck right now actually does have does have a lot of inherent advantage. You want to draw enough cards to not fall behind, but not. But you want to draw as few cards as possible at this point in the game. And Rudy's still staying on his plan of just cast it, of just casting haymakers, which I really do like here. Yep. And as long as he has counterflux mana back up, then he has a lot of insurance against what Ali can do to him in return. Right. So he's going to cast a threat every turn. If Ali counters the threat, Rudy's going to fight over none of them. He's just going to counter the re like he's going to counter revelations from Ali. Um, so go ahead and gain say that. He did not have to spend one of his counterfluxes on it. A little bit of danger here from Rudy in that Ali could just have, if Ali had another revelation, this would be pretty bad news. But he does not. 
it's going to be another Or an Aetherling play. potentially could or also an, steal this one. Right, or an Aetherling. Uh, though to be fair, if Ali, Ali taps out for Aetherling, Rudy probably wins from that point. Um, because Ali would have very little mana, Rudy could make a revelation for six with counterflux play, and a rev for six usually can take down an Aetherling, provided Rudy's kept in his Azorius charms. So now we're in potentially a race to Elspeth's emblem here. We are in a race toward, well, one player is going to have, one player's going to have the detention sphere of the Elspeths. Um, the, the big problem is that Ali's run out of cards. Yeah. So this has given Rudy a pretty big upper hand. And Rudy's hand is juiced right now. Yeah, he has managed to cast none of his counter fluxes. So yeah, if Rudy can hit the emblem first, it, it, it will win for him. And now he's just, Rudy's using his extra mana to bully here. He's going to play Revelation with Counterflux up. Rudy sensing some weakness here, takes his opening to Counterflux back. Ali with no other counter or Revelation of his own response to potentially punish that play. And now Rudy pulling really far ahead. Yeah, I actually think that casting the Counterflux there was pretty aggressive by Rudy. Maybe that's just. I guess that could just, you could say, is a style thing. I, I would have not fought over my own revelation there just for fear of my opponent having a revelation. But Rudy went for it and was not punished. And because of that, he's now has a, has a firm grip on the game. Yep. So you see, we've, we actually have run out of Elspeth tokens, <laughs> of course. So we're going to assemble tokens now. And yep, Elspeth's at seven. And just two lands in hand for Ali means he probably will not be able to deal with this. I mean, he actually has to try to threaten Elspeth a little bit this turn to at yes. least keep him off of ultimate, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but Rudy, Rudy will just trade all the tokens here, most likely. But he has to make the play. It's going to Celestial Flare one of them. Um, Celestial Flare is, is possibly just a better Azorius charm. That's why he's, he's probably just replaced his charms with them. And he's going to go ahead and activate Mutavault and throw all these creatures in front. Bunch of tokens trade. Mutavault lives. And looks like there'll be an Elspeth demo, and that'll be it. Rudy Bricks at two games to zero. Defeats Ali Mirgahari and moves to 2-0. Pretty skillful navigation there from Rudy overall and has a pretty big haymaker.